Welcome back to the Sportsmax Zone. The Bahamian star Shone Miller Weibo says she was nursing a few injuries heading into the recent Tokyo Olympic Games. She told Leighton Levy on the latest episode of On Point, set to be aired at 1 p.m. Eastern Caribbean time on the Sportsmax app and the Sportsmax YouTube page. Uh, those uh, that would be tomorrow. Those injuries almost derailed, she said, her bid to make history in the 400 meters. Leighton joins us now to preview uh, that interview, and uh, we are less than 24 hours now from that uh, interview being aired on the Sportsmax app and our YouTube channel. Double uh, L, Leighton Levy. Um, mm -hmm. How 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 did that interview go, and and how much did you glean from the outstanding 400 meter runner from the Bahamas? She revealed quite a bit during that interview. I, I quite enjoyed having that chat with her. Um, it was the first time I was actually getting an opportunity to talk to her, and she, it turned out quite well. I mean, she mentioned, of course, that she wants to break the world record, or at least break 40, 48 seconds in the 400 meters, because, and, and, and if you listen to her, what she said, the fact that she was hurt running 43.86, sorry, <laughs> she ran 43.86, the world record with Shatton, yeah. but um, she ran 48.36 in a lot of pain, she said. So if she's, you, you, you'd have to imagine that if she's healthy, certainly breaking 48 seconds would be within, within reach. Yeah, we would think so. So we are into November now, um, uh, Leighton, which means that her background training for the new season would just about have started. Mm -hmm. Yes, I mean, when, I, when we spoke with her, she hadn't started preseason yet. But you got the sense that she had a specific focus in mind this year for the World Championships coming up in Oregon, um, where she, I, I suspect that she's going for her first 400 meter world title, having won two, uh, two, two Olympic titles in the last two years, um, copying uh, Marie Rosa Perec. But she's never won a world title. You remember, you know, she's had she last world championships in, in 20, that she ran in 2017. She was, she had that leg issue. And of course, in 2019, she was upended by Salwa Al Nasir. So she's, this is something that she's, an area that she's never excelled at in terms of winning that gold medal at the World Championships. So that's her primary focus. And you get the sense that that, along with breaking those 48, that 48 second barrier is where she wants to be in time for Oregon next year. Leighton, when you spoke to her, I'm guessing that the topic of injuries came up based on our intro. Did she say specifically how she's able to manage her injuries on competition day? Well, she, she, she had niggles all year. Um, I think she picked up an injury somewhere in June or July, and it kept her out of training for a while. So when she came back, remember, she ran in Hungary, and she lost to Sherika Jackson, one of those few times that she would have lost to Sherika. And she also speaks about that as well. She speaks about, you know, how pleased she was that Sherika has been doing so well this year, this past season in the 100 and the 200. But um, going into the Olympics, she was still not 100% healthy. And of course, as we saw in the 200 meters, she felt something. She decided to back off and give herself a, the best opportunity of winning the gold medal in the 400. As it turns out, that was exactly what happened, despite the fact it was a very emotional moment for her talking about um you know how painful it was running that 400 meter final so yes um maria the she you know she had to grit her teeth to make that to, to make that victory uh, run that victory lap in the 400. yeah well let's tease a little bit of uh, shawna miller weibo now uh Leighton. she also spoke about her decision to tackle the 200 400 double in tokyo my coach, made the decision in 2019, actually at the end of the season, that we were going to go for both in 2021. Um, we just obviously didn't want to share that with anyone. Um, but the main goal was to focus on the 200 uh, this season. And unfortunately, injuries came and we never got a chance to get to speed work. Um, but, I mean, we still went out there. We still gave it a good fight. And I uh, fell a little bit short. But, yeah, I'm so proud of myself for what I was able to accomplish this season. Yeah, um, that's Shawnee Miller Weibo there talking about her decision to tackle the 2 4 double because uh, Leighton, um, weeks before the Tokyo Olympic Games, we were as journalists and uh, track and field enthusiasts a little unsure about whether she would tackle the double or not. Absolutely, lads. And of course, you know, as she said there, her plan was always to focus on the 200. And of course, when I spoke to her dad, as we just before we did that interview earlier this year, you know, he wasn't even sure what she was going to do. I don't think anybody from the B3A knew what she was going to do either. 
as it turns out, Ingrid decided what she was going to eventually ended up doing, which is running the 400 at her best. Um, given that the field, Chancho mentioned that, well, the field was extremely deep in Tokyo, as we all know. Um, you know, we were talking about Elaine Thompson, Shelley and Fraser Price, and of course, that, uh, Dean Asher Smith, etc. But nobody factored in Mboma, who came through for the silver medal as well. She spoke about the depth of that field, but she did figure out if she was healthy, she would have had a good chance of, of, of winning a medal there as well. Yeah, Leighton, and from your interview, you would have gotten a sense of her mindset and what drives her success. Talk to us about that. Well, look, you get the sense that Shawnee Miller, like most elite athletes, most athletes who are superior, superiorly talented like she is, is that there, it, 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 it will take something earth-shattering to, to break her fortitude. Huh? She is one of those athletes who will fight against all obstacles to get to where she wants to. And you get the feeling from her is that regardless of whatever the circumstances were or are, she was not going to shirk. She, she believes in her ability. She knows what she's capable of. And of course, that belief and confidence is what drives that success for her. I mean, you remember the only other person to, to have done what she did this past summer is Mari Jose Perec, uh, who won the 2-4 in 20, 1996, I think it was, yes. Um, but, you know, she has, and had, had it not been for injuries, you couldn't really rule out her opportunities uh, in, in the 2-4 in Tokyo, notwithstanding what we saw from Elaine thompson Hero. But Sean Emile is that kind of individual. She's tough, very, very tough mentally, and she has goals, and she wants, she, she tries to achieve those goals regardless of whatever her life might throw in her way. So, I mean, she also mentioned, of course, that she plans to take on the Taflon somewhere between now and 2024, where she hinted that could be her last Olympic Games as well. Mm. I wonder if her husband has anything to do with that. Uh, that development. Uh, uh, he, ha he, has, he has a lot to do with it, Lance, as you'll discover when you watch the interview tomorrow. Yeah. She said that, it was, I mean, being one of the world's best decathletes as well, yeah. he said, she said that she was a very, very, he was a very, very significant influence mm. in her decision. Because, you know, when she started out, she started out as a heptathlete yeah. and eventually tapered down to the two and the four. Yeah. So she thinks she might, she might want to go back there before her career ends. Yeah. Uh, so you touched on it earlier on, Leighton, about uh, what she did in the 200 meters because of her injury and, uh, you know, trying to manage her 200, 400 double workload that she had in Tokyo. So um, this is something she spoke about as well. Why did she choose to jog home in that 200 meter final in Tokyo? Three. And, you know, right before the heats, I actually felt really good. Um, everything was going really well. And it was after the heats that I actually got uh, a little bit banged up where um, I started to feel my right hip. And we didn't quite know exactly what it was. And um, went on it, raced on it, it was still light at the time. Uh, raced into the semis and really hurt it then. And... Um, but in the race itself, I actually didn't feel the hip. It was my hamstring that ended up grabbing on me. And yeah, it was just a wrap from there. So I just figured, I'm one of those people who said, if it's not for me, it's not for me. And, you know, after all that happened, I was just like, anyway, God, you have your plans. This obviously wasn't a part of it. So, so be it. Of course, one of the nominees for World Female Athlete of the Year for 2021, Shawnee Miller-Weibo, uh, a very, very deep uh, list of nominees there. Unlikely that she would win, uh, Leighton. But it has been a tremendous season for her, and we are all anxious and looking forward to what she has to say to you on uh, this, uh, this program on Friday afternoon. Yes, absolutely. I think she reveals a lot, and, and it's, I, I was quite pleased with how forthcoming she was. Because, you know, sometimes athletes tend to hold stuff back about what they're experiencing. And what we've seen, I've, well, certainly I've seen so far with this On Point series, is the willingness of a number of athletes to tell you, to, to, to reveal how they were dealing with their respective situations meant from a mental side of things. Because as you know, you know we, we tend to not pay too much attention to you know, mental health or whether well, we never used to it. Now we're becoming a little bit more aware of it. And I've had it with, we heard it with with, with um, Justin Gatlin, um, with Candice McLeod. We've not we heard it with Sean and Miller Weaver, which will hear tomorrow. Akeem Bloomfield as well was particularly forthcoming about how difficult it was to, to navigate last season with the death of his mother and, of course, you know, the injuries that he suffered. And, of course, with the one that I think was probably the best of them is Chantal Malone, who we did just a couple of weeks ago talking about 
how devastated she was not to be able to medal at the Olympics, given that she was, at the, at the start of the season, she was one of the best long jumpers in the world with 708, which put her in the top three in the world mm -hmm. at that early stage of the season. Mm -hmm. So what we're, what we're seeing, a trend I'm seeing coming through from all of these interviews we're doing, including Sean and Weaver, is the willingness to talk about those issues and how they've been dealing with it, yeah. which I think is, is quite commendable. Yeah, and, and just another quick tease to her interview on Friday afternoon as she continues her recovery from injury. Miller Weaver says she has yet to decide whether she will take on the 200-400 double at next year's World Championship in Oregon. Um, we're not sure yet. And that's something I, I have to sit down and discuss with my coach and uh, see what's the best plan from here. But um, like I said, in his mind, I know he's, he's already thinking world record um, for the 400. And so uh, that, that's definitely going to be on the table. And yeah, we'll, we'll see what else from there. Yeah, so Leighton, um, we've seen enough here to get us excited about the on-time um, presentation on Friday afternoon, 1 o'clock Eastern Caribbean time. Uh, on point shows at 1 p.m. as I said, Eastern Caribbean time. And uh, that will be on the Sportsmax app and also on the Sportsmax YouTube page. So, so Leighton, uh, great talking to you again. And uh, keep up the good work, brother. Thank you. Well, one correction, it's actually 2 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Jamaica time. So that's 2 p.m. Eastern Caribbean time, 1 yeah. o'clock in Jamaica for on point with uh, yep. Shone Miller Weibo and uh, Leighton Levy on Friday afternoon. Thanks, man. Any problem, any time, guys. And there's one quick, one quick quote. Um, Ricky Hill is not going to be Jamaica's next coach. <laughs> I have that on good authority, and I'll probably be breaking that story. Well, not really breaking it, but I'll be reporting on that sometime tomorrow. Okay, Leighton, we we'll, we'll look we we'll look forward to seeing your report. <laughs> <laughs> All right, take it easy, guys. <laughs> Le Liverpool, Le the Liverpool man, Leighton Levy, uh, talking to us about possibilities of Jamaica's next coach. If it won't be Theodore Tapper Whitmore, we're going to break, are we? We'll be back with more on the zone after this.